Recently, FFG had a live stream where they showed the planetary qualifier participation and prizing, and the community was quite whelmed, unfortunately, by it. The, some of the card choices they chose for participation and for top uh, 16 and top 8 and for the judges, a lot of people were like, oh, that's not exciting. And also, if you didn't see the stuff for the showdowns, the, 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 the cards they chose for the showdowns this season too also were like a little bit confusing. No disrespect, no disrespect intended, right? But it's it, and I I always give people benefit of the doubt. I always try to see the angle that other people potentially were thinking from when when they made the decisions that they made. And some people are super goofy too, right? Some people they saw that live stream and they're like, "Oh my gosh, what are they trying to do? They're trying to kill the game already." Jeez, relax, relax heavy internet consumer no nobody's doing that there is there isn't a single card game that exists where the people designing it are like yeah let's put these super unexciting unplayable cards as alt arts for incentives to come to these cool events that's ne that sentence has never happened ever okay so what had to be the case? It had to be that FFG's internal meta had shown that these cards were more playable than maybe we have made them out to be in the larger worldwide meta of Star Wars Unlimited, right? That's what had to have happened. As I'm sure some of you know if you've been playing, the capture mechanic has not been widely used. If anything, it's been Relentless Pursuit, and it's probably been a Cad Bane player. Maybe a few Boba Fett players tried out Relentless Pursuit for a bit, but eventually you find out that FFG has printed 2,900 million good cunning cards, so there's just other cards you put in your deck instead. And you could put Relentless Pursuit, but you also could just put Waylay and No Good to Me Dead and Surprise Strike still or whatever. You know what I mean? So anyways, I, I, I thought to myself, I was like, okay, after we saw this event or this live stream, what, what, how would FFG build Boba Green? And so I went through the deck builder and I was like, what? Maybe, maybe this is how FFG saw Boba Green looking like, okay? So, <laughs> just wanted to share it with you. It's kind of fun. This is what we've got here. FFG Boba Green with no ramp. All right. I don't know if they would legitimately play no ramp, but I tried to, f I tried to fit in as many of the promos for the showdowns and the planetary qualifiers as I could in here, right? Reasonably. So, we've got Boba Green here. Of course... We've got two Maul and three Vader and three Fire Spray. I think that's, I think that makes sense. You could argue for if it want to be a little bit faster, maybe no Vader and a third Maul, right? And then I thought, okay, definitely four Lom Zuckus. I think let's do that. We're doing Energy Conversion Lab too because we're playing Zuckus, just a really awesome thing. If we don't have four Lom on the board, we'll just eventually use Energy Conversion Lab for Zuckus, or we get to do that once, and then eventually we get to do the four Lom Zuckus combo. Pretty solid. What else do we got in here? We got the we fit the relentless pursuit in here. Okay, we got two of those. And how many waylays do we have? None. We have no waylays in here. We were still able to fit in two no good to me deads because we really still want to exhaust a Sabine that gets a dark saber put on her. Okay, no good to me dead on those Sabines. The other thing that I did is we put in we put in the discerning veteran. Now. It's totally possible that instead you would just play Waylay or maybe they'd play a third Relentless Pursuit, but the Discerning Vet, this gives us a few capture options that are a little bit different, right? Relentless Pursuit doesn't care about the arena they're in, just that they cost the same or fewer. And if it's a bounty hunter, you get a shield. We get to put the shield on Boba Fett, put it on the Boba Fett leader. Way hard to interact with that. The Discerning Veteran, it just captures a unit in the enemy ground arena. 
So it can't capture a spaceship, but it can capture anything in the ground. You know what it can it can do? It could capture a reinforcement walker. It could capture a mall, which is pretty cool. It's a little bit expensive, but maybe they maybe maybe they were thinking is is pretty solid. Just a one of. We also put Toro in here to just combo with the number of bounty hunters we have in here. It's also totally possible that they fit Hotshot Blaster in here at some point too. But what we've got is we got three seventh fleet, two Boba Fett unit. We fit one unrefusable offer in here. And if you if you're not familiar with unrefusable offer, it is a bounty upgrade that you attach to a non-leader. And it says play this unit for free under your control. It enters play ready at the start of the regroup phase, defeat it. So a really cool key part of this card is it says play this unit for free. So if it has a when played effect, you get the when played effect. So your goal here is if you get to now this is this is magical fairyland, right? This is this isn't this is pretending the optimal situation happens, right? Say you and your opponent, you and your opponent's Boba Green. Same turn, same resources. They play Vader out. Vader ambushes in to one of your guys and brings something out. And then for two resources, you put unrefusable offer on their Vader. And then you energy conversion lab out a Zuckus or you ambush in a Forlom or whatever and you finish the Vader off. Then you get to play the Vader for free on your side. Com comes into play ready. And... You get to get the one plate effect. You get to get out a 7th Fleet Defender or a Boba Fett or something. And then you can use the Vader to immediately in that same action ambush and defeat another unit of theirs. Or you can, it's readied so you can not ambush and then hit him in the base with it. And then after that phase, the Vader's going to die. But you got, you got a unit from your deck out of it too. And it only cost you two. And you got to hit your opponent's base for five. Or you got to... Uh, kill a unit with the Vader too, so it's something. It's really hard to fit cards in the deck, right? So there's only one of that. Like you, like I said, there's only one unrefusable, unrefusable offer. Only one discerning veteran. Something else we were also only able to fit in one of is the legal authority. Once again, if you haven't read this card too many times, you can attach it to any friendly unit, a spaceship, or a ground unit. It gives you plus two HP. And then when played, the attached unit captures an enemy non-leader unit that has less power than it. So we got a variety of capture, right? We got something that has less power, something equal or less cost, something that's only in the ground arena. And they do different things. One's a unit. One gives a unit a shield and goes cross arena. And one gives a unit more HP. It's, uh, it's still really situational. It is an upgrade. Yeah. It's, I, I, I think this might have been how they would have built their Boba Green. I, I, I put in a Salacious Crumb in here. I put in a commission here to get two Boba Fett's armor. Uh, I did fit in the Dr. Evazan in here too, if you didn't see. That is also one of the promos that they chose. I really do think Dr. Evazan is actually really good, but I do think that you, you do got to be a deck that does want to defeat your opponent relatively fast. And you do probably have to be playing McClunkies. Or some other way to bounce Evazan to your hand. So you, you really are mostly playing him on like turn one. You hit the base for three. As soon as your opponent breaks the shield, you McClunky it back to your hand. And then what ends up happening is you never play Dr. Evazan again. Next turn, you resource Dr. Evazan. Unless you're able to keep an overwhelmingly high amount of control of the ground arena. And your opponent doesn't play blue removal cards. Then... Then maybe, yeah, then you can play Evazan again. But that's really, I think, what happens there. And then, yeah, we've got Bazine in here, Crafty Smuggler, Cartel Spacer, st kind of standard uh, early game Boba Fett stuff. Yeah, this is, this is what I'm thinking uh, that possibly could have been the internal FFG Boba Green. If someone from FFG wants to let me know how close I got to their internal Boba Green list, that would be pretty epic and pretty fun. But uh, either way, let me know about... All of your thoughts in the comments below if you have any ideas about what they could have done here or uh, do you think there is potential for evazan and, and legal authority 
and I, I'm sure that there's potential for relentless pursuit as long as bounty hunter leaders get printed in as long as Boba Fett exists in the way that he does I do think that relentless pursuit is a reasonable card to play it's just really hard when there's like I said 200 million good cunning cards to play and you gotta f find a find the reason why you're playing this relentless pursuit over another but that is it for this video thank you for being here thank you for spending some time here make sure you check out one of my other videos if you haven't there's a lot of fun new content here on the channel so check it out and i'll see you in another video Jeez, how many videos am i gonna make today one more this is <laughs> the last one